All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Valheim. And today I want to do uh, kind of like a little alchemy store. You know, something where you can like roll up to and buy your potions and stuff like that. You know, at, at the site that I have, I've got this cool rock formation. And it's just, you know, it's an artifact that's in the world. You see it all over the place. This one just happens to be right next to my main base. And I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if I can make sort of like an alchemy tower, kind of like an alchemy shop where people can roll up to it, but it's in the shape of a tower. And it's kind of in the middle of this with maybe some trees around the side of it. So that's what I'm going to do in this build. Now, before I go any farther, I'm look, I'm in debug mode, so I'm going to be flying around and I'm going to be building without resources. I think most YouTubers nowadays are, are building inside of debug mode, mainly because it's easier to build and we don't have to spend an enormous amount of time getting resources. Look, I highly recommend not going into debug mode until you play the game. I've played over 100 hours so far and debug mode will totally ruin your experience. So don't go into debug mode if you really want to play the game because it's absolutely going to ruin you for the rest of the game. Now, the biggest trick was trying to get the circle right. I mean, there's nothing really to help you with placement of the circle. But when you're trying to make a circle, you're going to use that small two meter beam for the ground. And then you're going to place it down. And then, you know, as you're placing it down, you're just going to increment the angle by one. So just like one click on your scroll wheel to turn it. I don't know if it's a degree or just just one snapping point. And you're going to continue to keep doing that around. And depending on how tight you want your circle, you're going to put a couple pieces out, two or three, and then change the angle. And then lay out another two or three, and then change the angle, and so on and so forth. And you wind up coming up with the circle. And so I got this circle somewhat in the center. I think it's a little offset. I mean, that's nitpicky, but it looks really good. The next thing I wanted was, you know, I really wanted some trees that were going to be very, very close to the circle. So I wound up planting down some pine trees, which I know are very tall. And I place them, you know, just outside of the circle. It's, it's, they're pretty close to the circle, but not so close that when they grow to full trees, that the base of the trunk is going to interfere with the circle. It's just going to be barely touching the circle. Now, this took a little bit of trial and error to figure out how far to go back from the tree, but it's like, if you look at the tree itself, it's like almost a, a little bit more than half of the uh, height of the tree. So, you know, try to figure out where the middle of that tree is if you laid it down horizontally and then, you know, put it just just a smidge over the middle. And when the tree grows up, the the trunk will be right next to the edge of the circle. After the trees were all grown up, I wanted to focus on doing the floor first. And I kind of wanted a cool design. Kind of like in the shape of like a starburst. I mean, not really, but it kind of looks like a starburst. So I, I, I futzed around with that a little bit. I, I wound up using the two meter wood beams and then a combination of some four meter wood beams followed by another two meter wood beam and kind of angled them and swirled them a little bit until I came up with a pattern that I really liked. And then I went ahead and filled the rest of the floor in and, and got that rest of the floor pieces in. But you're just going to have to kind of do the best that you can do. And you're going to have to overlap some pieces uh, to get the floor in completely. And I mean, it looks good. It, it looks okay. When the floor was done, I had enough room in the middle. It was perfect. I had enough room in the middle for a fire. And so I kind of raised the ground a little bit and, and got my fireplace in there. And it sits just perfectly in the center of this. So it looks it looks pretty neat when the floor was done. And then it was on to do the walls. And I, I didn't just want standard walls. I've been doing standard walls the whole time. If you watch the Longhouse video, you know, I did some interweaving with the angled uh, beams. And so I kind of wanted to do something very similar. So I started off with the 26 degree cross beam and placed it on the edge of the circle. And I tried to get them even as much as humanly possible. It actually messed up and I had to do it over a couple times. But and then I used a 26 degree wood beam to kind of spiral around. And I, I used the same concept as I did with the floor. So I, I kind of eyeballed it when I was flying around where I was turning the angle of that 26 degree beam to match the circumference of the floor and just kind of kept continued to kept spiraling upwards. Now, the reason I planted the trees is because 
when you attach anything to a tree, it becomes a ground piece. So it turns blue all over again. So it gives you that stability of being able to continue to build higher and higher and higher because every time I touched a tree, my beam then turned into a blue beam and then followed by the two greens and the yellow and so on and so forth. But it never got to the yellow stage, I, maybe once or twice. And maybe I had to put in, you know, an additional two meter um, horizontal beam like into the tree and then into that spiral to be able to, to support it. But mainly I, I was able to touch the beam to the tree most of the way up, which made this really cool spiral. And I did that a couple times to kind of give it this like weaving type effect. With the spiral complete, then it was on to move on to the walls. And I didn't want to do walls all the way up to the top, right? I mean, I wanted to have this spiral be kind of like the main focal point of the design, have this kind of, kind of not really like a nest, but maybe think like a tornado or something like that. So I, I put down some uh, half walls and then a full wall and then another half wall. So mainly because I wanted uh, a varying different heights for snapping points. I wasn't too sure what I was 100% to, but I know I wanted some shelving in there. So I wanted better options for how I could snap things to the wall. So, so that's why I put down the half wall and then the full wall and then the half wall again. With the walls complete, I, I wanted some sort of roof. Now the roof is not... I mean, it looks horrible, right? Because there's no really great way to put in a dome kind of roof or at least a curved roof. So I wound up overlaying thatch to make it look somewhat decent, but it's high up in the trees and you don't really see it. The main reason for the roof is just to keep the fireplace going. I, I didn't want it to go out when there were storms and nor did I want, you know, think about a shop, people going in there and being wet while it's raining. <laughs> so I wanted to have some sort of roofing in place. And then also because the fermenters they require to have a covered position for them to be able to work. I needed to, to put in, you know, somewhat of a roof up there on the top. With the roof in place, I then decided, you know what, I, I really wanted some more weaving in my structure. I had a couple cross weaves going, but it didn't look full enough. So I decided to put in another round of weaving around the, the tower portion of it. And it I, I liked it. it. It came out pretty nice. It made it look uh, really sweet, you know. And then I, f I felt that the front of the building needed something. So I put in this little kind of like front archway design um, that turned out okay. I mean, it wasn't bad for what I could do in that space. I think it, it turned out, you know, pretty decent. Finally, with the weaving done and, and the entrance done, it was time to start working on the inside. And, you know, I, I'm thinking shop, right? So I, I want some places for people to come and sit while they're buying their wares. So I put down some tables in front with some benches. And then I, I started working on where I would actually start putting things. Like where would I put my fermenters? And I thought, I didn't want to like a full loft. I didn't want a second floor, but I thought kind of like maybe a walkway along the top up there would look pretty neat. So I started working on getting a walkway in and it started to turn out pretty good. So I, I went with that decision and then felt that maybe the fermenters would look really great up there. So ultimately that's where I put my fermenters and I put a little bit of storage up there as well so that, you know, when you're done creating your potions, you can put them in the storage. And then also, you know, finally, you know, some little odds and ends on the ground and stuff to kind of make it look like a workplace up there. With the fermenters in place, then it was time to start actually working on the shop itself. I, I wanted some sort of like shelving system along that round back part of the wall and I was able to put in some core beam pillars and then put in the the little one by one floor slabs and those look I mean they worked out really well for the shelving system so I was able to get three shelves along the entire back wall in there and and once I had that done I was like okay that's that's really cool somebody could come in and they could see all the wares on the back and then the fermenters are on the top processing away. And so I thought that was, you know, a really cool addition to have that kind of shelving design in the back back there to kind of show off the wares for this particular alchemy shop. And then lastly, you know, it's about decoration, right? To get all the little odds and ends pieces in there to, to really make your shop look cool. So I started 
spending a lot of time just decorating, putting down items, putting down some more chairs and benches, little odds and ends, you know, some banners and stuff like that. Some some lighting got put in there and uh, yeah, really started to make the place come to life with all these little extra decorations that I wound up putting on the on the build. All right. So from here on out, I'm just going to show some views of the tower with some music playing so I hope you guys liked this video. It was a lot of fun to do this build. I, I'm probably going to do some more custom like shops because I, I like that concept of the the individual shops. To have like so alchemy shop. I'm thinking about the next build doing some sort of like uh, something with the workbench. You know, some some workbench related shop, and then probably something with the forge to have some sort of like blacksmith shops or something like that but let me know in the comments below if you guys like this kind of idea and if you like this build at any rate i hope you uh, enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button if you're not a subscriber please subscribe love to have you in the community if you want to follow me on any of my social media you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell that way you know when i go live and when i post new videos i'll talk to you later thanks a lot Bye bye